post-traumatic disorders to the general public. He is also a visiting lecturer at a number of Canadian and U.S. universities and has written several articles and papers relating to conflict resolution, humanitarian aid, and human rights. For all his efforts and accomplishments, General Dallaire has been the recipient of various international awards, including being the first ever recipient of the Aegis Award on Genocide Prevention from the United Kingdom and the United Nations Association of Canada's Pearson Peace Medal, amongst many, many others. Please join me in welcoming our closing keynote, General Romeo Dallaire. right after lunch or speaking in front of a large crowd of starving students before supper. <laughs> we uh, are going to spend a, a little while together as not being an academic but a soldier and we're very visual people. I'm going to be using every pedagogical tool I can find and so there's going to be a bit of PowerPoint so I hope you'll be able to monitor that as we work our way through uh, this afternoon a subject uh, that you have been, in fact, quite involved with, of course, today. And I'm addressing uh, leaders. You are, by being university students, joining the leadership strata of our nation. And that strata has a number of different levels of leadership. But by the rigorous intellectual endeavors that you are going through, you are acquiring knowledge, skills, and hopefully you will capture experience that will give you the raw material to take on leadership roles within our society and within this country. And so this afternoon, I want to touch on that, both you as students and beyond uh, the sphere of being students uh, into the future. And we're going to talk about, in fact, how you will get engaged or whether you will engage with this great nation into a leadership role within humanity. Or will you limit yourself to a very narrow, sometimes egoistic requirement of meeting your needs and ensuring your personal future. And so we're going to talk about leadership not to make you feel comfortable, but on the contrary, to challenge you, to maybe make you at times mad and frustrated, to make you feel sometimes not in a position to be able to change, but in the end, leave you with a sense of optimism that you can, individually as leaders and collectively as leaders, influence the biggest of organizations uh, in our nation and in fact internationally. You can influence. And so we're going to go through a series of circumstances and there will be a few sort of tidbits of information on human leadership. And we're going to touch on human leadership. For leadership is a subject of human beings but we want to ensure that we are talking about human beings with other human beings. We're going to talk about you being personally committed, involved, within the role of leadership that you are willing to engage in. And in so doing in leadership, you are engaging in not one position of overwhelming strength, but on the contrary, seeking through humility the ability to move other people to achieve an aim, in fact, to serve, to serve others, and in so doing, uh, changing the circumstances. And so, let's work our way through that. And I think there are three start points that are required to set the scene of, in fact, you being part of this leadership role within this troubled world and part of a country uh, that is now at a mature level to hold responsibilities well beyond its borders. 
Churchill said that when a nation state acquires power, it also acquires a responsibility to humanity beyond its borders. And that is not an insignificant 